Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at a copy of Dungeon Roll. This is from Tasty Minstrel, Tasty Minstrel Games. And uh, it's a little treasure chest as you can see. Uh, and this is actually a dice game. It contains 15 custom molded dice, 8 double sided hero cards, 60 full color tokens, and countless hours of fun. That's always debatable. It's for one to four players, uh, recommended age is eight and up, and it takes about 15 to 30 minutes. And of course you don't want to give it to the little, real little kids. So we're going to open this up and see what we've got in this little cardboard treasure chest thing. So let's do that now. The box is fairly well constructed, I guess. It's okay. Alright, the uh, the booklets were separated by this piece of cardboard. You might want to hang on to it, just so your stuff doesn't get all screwed up. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's hinged kind of funny. Like, this piece is one piece that's glued on to the lid, so I can see that breaking really easily without a little bit of care. So you might want to find a way to reinforce that or just have it around people that aren't going to break it because uh, even moderate use is probably going to damage this pretty heavily. Uh, it's not super well constructed and it's a lot smaller than I expected it to be. I mean, this is barely bigger than my hand. I thought it was going to be a little bit larger and a little more... It, it, it's more of a cheap gimmick in my opinion. That's, I guess, what I'm getting at. All right, so we got dice here. Then we got our stack of stuff. Let's look at this stuff first. All right, so here's our uh, Delver, Dungeon Delver's Guide, which is the rule book, obviously. And um, yeah, uh, it doesn't look quite as good on the inside as it probably should. Pages aren't numbered, which is kind of annoying. Um, it's a weird shape too, so I don't like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in color at least. Paper quality is okay. Um, the components list is in here too. Seven white party dice, seven black dungeon dice, one ten sided level dice, 36 treasure tokens, 24 experience tokens, eight hero cards, four player aid cards, one rule book, one book of heroes. So, and you can play this one to four players, so if you want to do it solo, you can do that. And that's kind of cool. Alright, so we have Treasure Board A, which on the back is just like this generic dragon symbol on a gold coin. And then it's got that. Which looks like food, some rings that look vaguely suspiciously like the, that ring from that Lord of movies. Then you've got uh, two XPs and what looks like a leaf or a shield. Uh, treasure board B, same thing. On the other side, we've got uh, these like potions and scrolls, an orange, uh, yellow shield, I guess that is, and two red rings and two green swords. Then treasure board C, back image is the same. Then we've got a green sword, uh, three gray necklaces. I can't tell what the blue thing is. Looks like it might be a potion or something. Um, and the, these three purple swords and two yellow shields. Let me check the book and see what those things really are. If I can find it real quick. Nope. I don't know. It's going to have to remain a mystery until you buy it and play it yourself. Uh, this game, price-wise, varies pretty heavily. So, um, it's usually under 20 bucks, But, um, you might be able to find it for closer to 15 I think I paid 15 for my copy. I got it off Amazon. Uh, the, I, I've seen it at stores before, and it was like 20 bucks, And I was like, no. 
I'll find it cheaper than that. Yeah, the retail price is nineteen ninety five. So I don't know that this is worth it, quite honestly. All right, so we've got some XP tokens here. On one side, it's all ones, and then if you flip it over, it's got fives, tens, and threes. So you got three threes, four tens, and five fives. And they're Roman numerals, obviously. Then we got some more tokens, uh, XP tokens with the exact same layout. So those are the same. All right, then we've got our Book of Heroes. Uh, so we've got, uh, it's got a description here of what the card is. Here's an example of the card with numbers on it. So we've got like a Crusader Paladin. Those things were not the same historically. Uh, we've got an Enchantress Beguiler. The art's okay, not too fancy. The card, uh, the paper quality on this one's a lot better than the other one, I think. I don't know why. So then we've got a uh, half goblin chieftain, um, a knight dragon slayer, a mercenary commander. I don't know how those two occupations seem to fit. Uh, minstrel slash bard and a cultist slash necromancer and a, a spell sword or battle mage and that's it so it's got a little bit of detailing there it's got um, specialties uh, for each you know, character class like the occultist has uh, specialty clerics may use, be used as mages, and mages may be used as clerics. Um, ultimate animate undead, whereas the necromancer has uh, the same specialty, but his ultimate is command und command dead. Transform two skeletons into two fighters. Discard them during the next regroup phase. All right, and then we've got the cards here. So let's open these up and take a look. If I can get the plastic off. So far, it's not too bad, but it's not, I'm not impressed just yet. But you know, that doesn't mean much. This is just first impressions. I haven't played this game. So let's get these out of the way. All right, we've got some reference cards here. Uh, on the back is the image of what these uh, symbols mean. And that one I wasn't sure of is the Scepter of Power. I never would have got that out of it. Uh, on the other side is these um, charts here. It's got different meanings of what things are. Uh, so there's that. But yeah, there's four of these. One for each potential player and then we have the crusader so it's good sorry the crusader on this side and if you flip it over it's got the paladin then we have the occultist and the necromancer now really the um, the setting just changes a little bit. It's, it's really pretty much the same thing. Uh, the only thing different seems to be kind of the coloring around the, the box here and the informa the stats information. So then we have the half goblin on this side and on the other side we have the chieftain. Then we have the Enchantress. And the uh, Beguiler. Then we have the Knight. And 
and the Dragon Slayer. Mercenary. And the Commander. Now I have to admit the card quality on these is pretty good. Uh, the Spell Sword. Which I still think is a stupid name. And the Battle Mage. Then the Minstrel. And lastly, the Bard. So these, these are pretty good quality cards, actually. Um, the tokens aren't bad either. Like, they're regular thickness. Nothing particularly fancy. But I expected something a little crappier, honestly. Um, so that's the cards. Let's get those out of the way by putting them back in the box here. And the booklets. Uh, you'll probably want to get a little baggy for those uh, tokens because they're going to bounce all over and get destroyed. Alright, let's look at the dice. Now these are obviously um, game, that's loud. game specific dice. So if you lose one of these, that's going to really hurt your game. So be real attentive to that. The D10 is got some flourish to it. It's a little more designer. Uh, but the only real difference is there's a dragon where the 10 should be. Um, otherwise, it's kind of got this flame motif going. But the dragon symbol is the only real thing that keeps it apart. Uh, and it's a little larger than your typical D10. So it's a fairly big D10. That's about it. And then you've got... Your dice here, let's see if these are all kind of the same. Yeah, it looks like it. So we get these lined up here real quick so we can take a closer look at them. And now the, the dice are all kind of the same. So that makes it a little easier. So you could probably recreate one if you had to. It would be kind of hideous looking, but um, if you want to recreate one, I'll tell you what the symbols are here. So we've got two, four, six, seven of these black dies, like we said. And uh, on one end, we've got the skull, and then a, rotate it, and then we've got a dragon. Rotate it again, we've got this like goblin looking thing rotate it again we got this purple thing I don't know what that's supposed to be I just put the rule book away so and then back to the skull now if we turn the skull we've got this treasure chest symbol that's the goblin we saw a second ago then a potion so behind the skull is the goblin and then the potion and the chest and then you got your dragon, that's the potion we looked at, and that weird blobby thing. So that's the d black die. Then the white dice, we've got seven of those as well. We've got the cross swords. Then we've got a wizard hat. Then we've got, looks like a scepter top or maybe a wagon wheel. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Then we've got a helmet. And then we're back to the sword. And if we turn it, we've got like a scroll looking thing. There's that weird, I don't know what that is. And then there's a mask. And then we're back to the sword. So, they're basically just D6s with unique symbols on them. So you could recreate them or create a number system and just put it on a sheet of paper and say like the skull is a one, the dragon is a two, that sort of thing. So that's always an option. I don't like doing that. I've had to do it before, but you know, with these unique type of die, it's kind of a pain to lose one. They're decent quality dice though. Um, I'm pretty impressed with that. They're, they're pretty good rolling dice, pretty evenly weighted it seems like. Uh, the D10 is really nice, actually. Uh, it's a little big. I don't like that, but you got to have a gimmick. But yeah, overall, um, 
it's it's not bad. It's an okay quality game. I don't know how well the game actually plays, but it seems like it's okay. Uh, there are some expansions for it. I believe there's four expansions. I've got all of them. We'll look at those in another um, episode, one each, because uh, I gotta I gotta do the show daily. <laughs> so we'll look at those over the course of a few weeks, probably on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We'll do one each day. Uh, but that's Dragon Roll or Dungeon Roll. I'm sorry, uh, from Tasty Minstrel Games. It's a one to four player game, so it could be kind of cool playing it solo. It seems like it's an okay game. Uh, I've seen mixed reviews on it online, but I, I like rolling dice, so I thought this might appeal to me, and I think it will. The box is a little bit, could be better quality, and same with the primary rule book. The Book of Heroes is fine, but the primary rule book looks a little shady. Like, it's probably going to get torn up. Uh, and I would try and keep a real close eye on the tokens and the die, and maybe get some Ziploc baggies or something and put it in here with them so they don't just flop out because I have a feeling this will eventually get destroyed and or will be unusable it's not real sturdy construction it's a cute gimmicky idea that's about as far as it goes though but that is Dungeon Roll from Tasty Mistral Games uh, and that's gonna do it for this episode as always thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel and if uh, you get a chance, check out some of our other videos and keep an eye out for the expansions. And we we'll hope to see you on the next episode of What's Inside.